Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with lemon blueberry pavlova. That's right, my favorite way to enjoy lemon meringue is not with a pie, it is with pavlova, where we're gonna enjoy all the same taste and textures, except instead of a soggy crust, our soft, luxurious meringue is gonna be covered with a stunningly beautiful, crispy, crunchy shell. And as if that wasn't enough, we will also be garnishing with fresh blueberries and a homemade blueberry sauce. And the first thing we'll do before we really get started is go ahead and cut up our butter and set that aside. And please use something good, right? Good people don't use bad butter. And then next up, we're gonna go ahead and separate four large eggs, which I will show you one of. And today I'll be using the shell to shell method. And as usual, whenever I film this, the white never wants to separate from the yolk, which as I like to remind people is just because the eggs are really fresh. So that is a good thing. But anyway, we are gonna to wanna to end up with four yolks in one bowl and four whites in the other. And if those little white things on the yolk bother you, you can pull those off. And we're actually gonna work with the yolks first, but don't refrigerate the whites. Just cover them and leave them on the countertop since those are gonna whip up a lot better at room temp. And then what we'll do to start the lemon filling is take our four yolks and add some freshly grated lemon zest. Okay, at least two lemons worth. And above and beyond a little bit of juice, that is where most of the lemon flavor is gonna come from. And then to that, we will add a small pinch of salt, followed by a slightly larger pinch of sugar. And then last but not least, our freshly squeezed lemon juice, which of course you've squeezed after zesting the lemons. And that's it, we'll take a whisk and give this a thorough mix before heading to the stove, where we're gonna place our bowl over some barely simmering water. Okay, so our heat's on low, and we only have like an inch or two of water in there as we don't want the water high enough to touch the bottom of the bowl. And what we'll do is stir that pretty much constantly for the next 10 minutes or so or until it gets very hot to the touch and thickens up enough to coat the back of a spoon. Oh, and by the way, the reason we want to switch to a rubber spatula or spoon here is so we don't aerate this mixture. Okay, I made this wrong for years and I always used a whisk, but you end up incorporating so many air bubbles, you just don't get the same texture. So a spatula here is definitely the way to go. And what we're making here is basically called a lemon curd, although this is not gonna be quite as firm and dense as those traditionally are. Okay, this is gonna be more like a very, very thick sauce. So instead of using more yolks and cooking this until it really gets thick, like I said, we're just gonna stir this until it gets very hot to the touch, sort of like bath water that you're thinking might be too hot to get into, and also will thicken up enough to coat the back of a spoon, which is hard to see on one of these silicone spoonulas, but you can see how it's coating the sides of the bowl. And then what we'll do once we think our mixture is thickened up enough is go ahead and stir in our chunks of butter, three or four at a time. And we will wait till each addition is pretty much melted before adding the next. And I'm not gonna show all the additions because they all pretty much looked exactly the same. And then what we'll do once the last of our butter has been incorporated is remove that from the heat and we'll pour it into some kind of bowl to cool. And yes, if you want, you could pass this through a strainer just in case you think you have some chunks of cooked egg yolk, or like those little weird white things that were stuck to the yolks. But mine look perfectly smooth, so I'm not gonna bother. But anyway, that'll be up to you guys. I mean, you are after all the thundering herd of what's basically a soft lemon curd. And even though this looks very thin now, once we wrap this and pop it in the fridge, which is what we're gonna do next, as you'll see, it's gonna thicken up beautifully. And yes, we do wanna push that plastic straight down on the surface so it doesn't develop a skin. All right, no one's ever been eating lemon curd and said, this is good, but I wish it had more skin. Okay, so we'll wrap that up as shown and we'll pop that in the fridge and chill it completely before we use it. And at this point, we can move on to making the actual pavlova, which will start by lightly oiling a silicone baking mat on top of a sheet pan. Since meringue is so sticky, it will even stick to something that's nonstick. And then before we start whipping our whites, we will wanna stir our cornstarch or as the people that I steal these recipes from call it, corn flour, into our white sugar. And we'll just give that a quick mix and set it aside. And once that's set, we can go ahead and grab our room temperature egg whites. And we will add an optional pinch of cream of tartar, which is just an acidic powder that helps stabilize the whites. And if you don't have it, no big deal, this will still work. And then speaking of acid, we will also add a little bit of lemon juice, as well as a little touch of real pure vanilla extract. And then what we'll do is take our biggest, balloonious whisk, and we will whip these whites for a few minutes until very, very soft peaks form. And I'm talking very, very, very soft. Ideally something that looks like this. And once we've reached this stage, 
We can start whisking in our sugar mixture, a couple tablespoons at a time. Okay, so we'll add some in, we'll whisk it for about a minute, or until we think it's been incorporated, and we'll keep doing that until it's gone. And yes, of course, if you want, you can use an electric mixer, but I really do think you get a much better meringue if you do it by hand. Although the big stand mixers will do a good job. But why not burn off a few calories and sneak in a little bit of an aerobic workout? And then as far as the end game goes here, once all the sugar's been incorporated, we are gonna to wanna to whisk this until relatively stiff peaks form. All right, not super, super stiff, since an over whipped meringue can actually get kind of dry and grainy, but these whites must be firm enough to hold their shape. And you know you've probably gone far enough when your meringue will hold some nice sharp lines. All right, you see those? So to me, that is absolutely perfect. And that's it, once our meringue is set, we can go ahead and transfer that onto our baking sheet by either using a spoon or a piping bag. And what we'll wanna do is place nice big dollops in a ring to form a circle about eight or nine inches across. And after realizing my first two were kinda of small, I switched to using two spoons so I could get a little more on there a little faster. And then what we'll do once we've gone all the way around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, is that we'll fill in the middle with at least an inch of meringue making sure it's attached to and touching all the dollops. And then what we'll do once we have that center filled in is go around the outside again, adding extra dollops to the top of our dollops. Oh yeah, we're talking double dollops so that we really build up that outside ring around the edge. And then later on, we'll have a beautiful depression in the middle in which to add our lemon curd and blueberries. And besides building up that outside ring and meringue as high as we can, I'm also at the same time kind of doing a little swirl design on the top of each peak. And like I said, if you want it really fancy, you can use a piping bag. But as you'll see, this rustic method actually looks really, really nice once it's baked. So don't stress out too much. And that's it, once we're happy with our design, this is ready to transfer into the center of a 250 degree oven for exactly one hour. But once the timer rings, we do not remove it from the oven. Okay, we definitely turn off the oven. But what we'll do is crack the door and just let it cool down completely in the oven. And by letting it dry out and cool slowly, we're gonna make sure we end up with a beautifully crispy and crunchy shell. So just leave it sitting in your oven like this until it's cooled completely. And then while that cools, we can move on to make our fresh blueberry sauce, which could not be simpler, since all we're gonna do is take some fresh blueberries, add a couple spoons of sugar, and a splash of cold fresh water, and we will bring that up to a simmer on medium heat, and simply cook it stirring occasionally for about 10 minutes or so, or until those blueberries collapse and the liquid thickens. Okay, what we're looking for is something that resembles this. And believe it or not, that's it. We will simply pull that off the heat and pass that through a fine mesh strainer using a combination of stirring and pressing with the back of the spoon. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna fast forward to the end of that process. So I can show you that once we're done, you should have a beautiful blueberry sauce that looks like this. And while this dessert would be beautiful with just fresh blueberries, I think being able to spoon this over also makes it extra special. So we'll go ahead and pop that in the fridge so it's nice and cold before we use it. And that's it, once that's set, we can finally see what our fully cooled meringue looks like, which to me looks pretty darn good. Okay, we're always gonna lose some definition as this puffs up a little bit when it bakes, but in general, it's gonna hold that shape pretty well. And then what we'll do next is somehow transfer this onto a serving plate or platter. But first we have to make sure it's not stuck onto our baking mat, which we can do by lifting it up and kind of peeling. But that's a little dangerous since it can kind of crack in half. So what I do is usually go around with a spatula, making sure it's loosened all the way around. And right here I went to try to pick it up and it started to crack and I got scared. So I grabbed a second spatula to play it safe and I was able to transfer it onto a plate. And by the way, you're always gonna get some cracks, which is not only fine, but actually look pretty cool. We're basically just trying to avoid major cracks where huge chunks fall off. Oh, and speaking of cracks not necessarily being whack, I'm actually gonna take a spoon and crack the center a little bit to make sure we have a nice spacious well for our lemon filling. And since right underneath that crispy crunchy shell is soft sticky meringue, if you do get some major chunks that break off, you can just sort of push them and stick them back on. And then once we're happy with our base, we will go fetch our now fully cool lemon curd filling and we'll go ahead and fill in the center. And in a perfect world, this is gonna be soft enough to kind of flow and spread easily but at the same time thick enough so it doesn't just run out between the cracks in the meringue. Although having said that, if yours came out thicker or thinner, it's still gonna work beautifully. But anyway, once that middle's been lemoned, we'll go ahead and add a whole bunch of fresh blueberries to the top, which I was just gonna put only in the center and not on the meringue, 
But after the third blueberry insisted, I decided to take a hint and open up the meringue seedings. All right, when the food's trying to tell you something, you want to listen. And that's it. We'll go ahead and finish up with some of our fresh blueberry sauce, which has by now fully chilled. And we'll go ahead and drizzle that over our fresh berries. And then maybe over some of the meringue for no apparent reason. And then once I have that applied, using the tip of my spoon, and then eventually the tip of a knife, I tried to make this straight fire with a little bit of a flame design, which sorta of, kinda of worked. And then for one final, final touch, we will add a gratuitous sprig of mint, which I think looks nice. But if anyone gives you a hard time, just tell them you're being ironic. And yeah, some of our blueberry sauce did run through the cracks on the bottom, but that's fine, we wanted that to happen, allegedly. And as I cut out and plate up a piece here, I'm gonna shut up for a few seconds so you can hear exactly how crispy and crunchy that shell is. Oh yeah, that sounds right. And of course, once plated, we can always spoon over some more blueberries. And then we'll go ahead and grab a fork and dig in to, as I said earlier, what I consider the ultimate in lemon meringue experiences. Okay, this lemon curd filling is so intensely lemony, not to mention the most gorgeous lemon color. And the way it fuses to that soft, sticky, marshmallowy center is nothing short of magical. And above and beyond the flavor contrast between the sweet and the sour, what really makes this so incredible is that contrast in textures between that crispy, crunchy outside meringue shell and that soft, sticky, luxurious, marshmallowy center. And of course, the only way to make already perfect lemon desserts even more perfect in my opinion, is by adding a little bit of fresh berries, blue or otherwise. Plus one last contrast, which a lot of people wouldn't even consider, is the contrast between that meringue which has no fat in it, and that beautifully rich, butter-infused lemon curd. Which is basically the same reason buttered toast works so well. But anyway, that's it. What we're calling lemon blueberry pavlova. While it does take a little bit of time to make, it is also very simple and easy to pull off. And even the most inexperienced bakers will be able to produce something intensely delicious, not to mention stunningly gorgeous. So for all those reasons and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.